I have preached on messages over the years that can easily be transcribed into books. But it didn't really crystallize until I had to give a talk at um, Faith Foundation. And I was talking to uh, budding entrepreneurs, young people who were going to go into business or who were already in business. And I began to think to myself, what can I say to these young people that would really help them in their journey? And I, I, I mean, I know they would have told how to succeed, how to do all these good things. But I doubted if anybody would have told them how to recover from a failure. And I knew that they would eventually get to a place where they would need that. So I, I spoke to them that day about, about how to recover from a failure. And that was when it crystallized in my mind. Because I could see the initial resistance to the topic when I started it. Because it was like, no, it's not my portion, I won't fail. Things like this won't happen to me. But there's no successful businessman that doesn't have a, a story of recovering from something that almost destroyed their business or their, or their lives. There are gaps in people's knowledge when it comes to how to recover from failure or a disaster or a bereavement and things like that. I could see clearly that people were not equipped. You know, when you look at how many top businessmen commit suicide, you know, and jump out of the window because stock crashes in, on Wall Street, then you have to ask yourself a question. What has happened to that person? Uh, that person has lost hope. That person doesn't be, they don't believe they can replicate what they've accomplished. The first obvious source of inspiration is the Holy Spirit. I have to say that, that the Holy Spirit is the one that explained the scriptures to me. Um, I read the um, scripture in 1 Samuel 30 about David's um, situation at Ziglag. And um, as I was reading the story, I began to see that there was some type of principles embedded in that scripture. And so I waited on God and he began to show me the principles. The Bible says underneath are God's everlasting hands. You know, that underneath sometimes is where people get to and they don't realize that they've fallen right in the hands of God and God can actually take them right back up. Uh, and this is what this book is about. We understood that if people um, found themselves on a downward trajectory, when they hit rock bottom, they actually have some kind of bounce that takes them right back up, if only they would continue going. I don't believe in triumphalistic Christianity. Um, of the 12 apostles that Jesus Christ had, one was a traitor, he committed suicide. The other 10 were martyred. One was banished on an island in Patmos. Jesus himself had to go to the cross. And he himself said, in this world, we're going to have trials. We're going to have telepis, that is pressure. Things are going to come to push us down. But we must have good cheer because he has already overcome the world. So if you have a faith that does not take into, into reality or doesn't take into cognizance the reality of what life can throw at you, then your faith is not really faith. And I always tell people, until your faith is tested, it is not triumphant faith. Your faith must be tested for it to be proven. So it is in these moments when everything is stacked against you and you find yourself on the canvas, as, is, as so to say, you know, or against the ropes. Those are the times when your faith really kicks in. That's when you really know if you have faith. So for me, a person of faith is not a person that goes through life and walks through life as is a breeze. There are people who have real challenges, but have that extra resource to cope with the challenges and to overcome the challenges. All the principles will apply in business. However, there are two that I think are very, very important. The first one is to understand that when everything seems down, it's not the end. It's not the end. In fact, some of the greatest breakthroughs in science, in technology, and in business came at moments when everything was down. That's when you draw on that extra inspiration and find that new trajectory that takes you somewhere new and somewhere greater. So, um, I would say, as a business person, applying the knowledge 
that when all the chips are down, is actually one of your greatest moments, is a kind of mindset that most people don't have. Because when the chips are down, when things are down, people want to just give up and quit. But actually, that's not the time to quit. That's the time to inflect, reflect, and get inspired with something new that can take you further than you've ever been. And I can take the case of, of Apple computers, Steve Jobs, and how the guy was fired from his company, Apple hit rock bottom, things didn't go well for them. But somebody was wise enough to call Steve Jobs back and they rebuilt the business. And today is one of the most successful businesses on the face of the earth. In fact, if not the most successful. Um, and stories abound. I think greatness and inspiration always comes from moments of inflection. And inflection sometimes can be forced on you by circumstances like failure. If you are a young person and you are struggling with family, the first thing I will ask you to do is find a mentor. Find somebody who's done it, who knows how to do it, and who can help you. Because they will cut down your journey by a wide margin. They will cut down your journey by a wide mile. The second thing is to know that you already have something that is positive, even though everything may look negative. For instance, um, the woman who her husband had just died, she was left with two sons. The creditors were coming to take everything they owned. And the prophet came to her and said, what do you have? And she said she had nothing except a jar of oil. We all have this jar of oil somewhere. We all have something that is of value, of value to us and valuable to us, but we don't recognize it as something of value. So even in your relationship that looks like everything is bad, what is that one good thing about it? Every time I, I have to counsel young couples, I always ask them, what attracted you to her? What attracted you to him? Okay? So let's forget all, all these bad things about the person. Can you still remember anything good about them? And then you find out that actually they do have quite a few good things they can still say about each other. And that sometimes becomes the foundation for build, rebuilding the relationship. I would like every human being to read this book. I want to talk to people who are engaged in business. I want to talk to people, students who are in school, because some of them are going to go through failure. Um, I want to talk to young people, even kids. I've seen kids read this book since it came out, and they couldn't drop it. Um, I want to talk to families. Um, I want to talk to young couples who may encounter problems in their marriage, how to recover from it. I want to talk to people who may suffer bereavement. You know, um, we never ask for it, but it does come. How do you cope? How do you get out of it? How do you move on with your life? Um, so really, I mean, if you are slightly literate, because it's not an intellectually deep book in that sense, and you can read and write, then I think it's a book that you should read. It is our expectation that this book will be in all bookshops online. Um, there will be uh, e-copies, Amazon, a few of the big um, online platforms will sell this book. Um, but we also intend at some, somewhere down the line to have what we call the bounce book, bounce back up tours, okay, where we will go around um, countries, not just Nigeria, and do um, daytime seminars on bouncing back. And, um, you know, it's going to be like high energy, pumped up, but practical reality about failure, but also steps to recover from failure.